medical students and surgeons-to-be learned not only from dissection of corpses, but also from operations on live patients. You have to imagine an audience of 150 students leaning on all these rails, peering in. And it's quite creepy down here in the middle. It feels like being on, on the stage of a theatre. In fact, of course, it is a theatre, an operating theatre. They used to do the operations in St Thomas's on the wards, but the screams of the victims were so disturbing to the other patients that they built this place specially in the roof of the old church. Now, Stuart, I believe you're going to do something very unpleasant to me, is that right? That's right. Well, the procedure we're going to look at today is an amputation, a very common operation in the mid-19th century because of the dangers of gangrene spreading through the body. Yeah? OK, so you're going to take off my leg, yes? That's right, yeah. Whereabouts? Below the knee. Below, below the, the knee. knee. Below the knee. Right, good. Now, I should point out that the operations in this theatre would have taken place without any form of anaesthetic at all. No anaesthetic? No anaesthetic oh. at all. So the patient would be fully conscious throughout the operation. So it was important that the operation was quick. And it was co a common piece of surgical showmanship to get the medical students in the stands to time each procedure. So we'll begin. Basically, this is a straight-back amputation knife, and it would be used to remove all the skin and muscle. Now, the, the, the procedure was called the tour de maître, the turn of the master. The knife would be brought up under the knee and then would be brought straight through all the flesh <laughs> and muscle, totally severing all the flesh. Yeah, that would be done in not much more than a few seconds. And then a straightforward surgical saw would be used to go through the ah. two bones and the leg would be removed. Gosh, it sounds awful. Now, I don't want to be rude or anything, but your apron doesn't look terribly clean to me. It wouldn't be. And in fact, the surgeons at the time operated in their day clothes, uh, frock coats or whatever. You have so washed your hands, have you? I would probably wash them after the operation more than I'd bother to wash them beforehand, considering the fact that if you've got a wound, it is likely to be full of pus. So I wouldn't really see the necessity to uh, wash my hands before treating oh. the patient. How many people died on the operating table? This operation we've just looked at, about 25% of the patients would probably uh, succumb eventually uh, to hospital infection. And there were many sources of infection in a hospital, and one of the most obvious ones is that uh, the medical students assisting in the operation, the surgeon himself, may at some point during that day have been dissecting corpses. So it was very easy for infection to spread. In 1867, Joseph Lister transformed surgical practice overnight with antiseptics. Lister's technique was so simple that at first most surgeons refused to believe it could possibly work. But it was tremendously effective and it quickly brought about a revolution in surgery. He used carbolic acid because it had been so effective in disinfecting the sewers. Now, this is carbolic acid, otherwise known as phenol. And this spray is one of the first carbolic acid sprays ever used in London. It's so precious that I'm not allowed to touch it. But you found it up underneath, and eventually the carbolic acid came spraying out of this nozzle. To begin with, he just sprayed the air, which must have been horrid, because it's filthy stuff, it's acidic, and it, you can't breathe, and it tastes terrible. But then he realised that it wasn't just the air, it was also the instruments and the hands of the surgeon that needed to be made antiseptic before they started to operate. Since Lister, the whole theatre has become a sterile environment. Just look at these all-metal instruments, designed to be sterilised. They've hardly changed since Victorian times. And the familiar surgical gloves, another Victorian idea, from 1876. <laughs>